Merry Christmas, my friend, from my home to yours. God bless you. God bless you. I pray as we approach Christmas, perhaps one of the most unique and challenging Christmases that we've ever faced, that this challenging Christmas will turn into a season in which you encounter the miracle of the birth of Christ and the promise of His presence in a way perhaps like never before, never before. And you discover a sense of joy and peace as we reflect upon the true meaning of Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us. Do you have a few minutes to talk about this? If you don't, please just post your prayer needs on the page before you slip out. But if you can stay around to talk about the significance of Bethlehem and the promise and why the Bethlehem promise matters. And if you need that reminder, then I think you're at the right place. You know, I love Christmas. I really do. I really do. Let the sleigh bells ring. Let the carolers sing. The more Santas, the merrier. The more trees, the better. Bring on the ho, ho, ho. The rooty toot, toot. The thumpity thump, thump. And the pa rumpa pump pump. I even love those hokey Hallmark movies. I love Christmas. I love it. I love it because someone somewhere will ask the Christmas questions. Like, what's the big deal about the baby in the manger? Or, who was he? Or, what does his birth have to do with me? The Christmas season prompts these and other questions. You know, I can remember the first time I asked those questions, or at least when I began asking them. Hey, I grew up in a small West Texas town. Our family was not poor, but certainly not affluent. My dad laid pipeline in the oil fields. My mom was a nurse, and she worked the 3 to 11 shift at the hospital. Consequently, most evenings, it was dad and the two boys. After dinner, my brother would wash the dishes. I was always in charge of sweeping the floor. We boys took our baths by eight and we were in bed by nine with permission to do one thing before going to bed or turning out the lights and that is we could read a book. I was a first grader. I remember specifically having just been introduced to books and we had this chest at the foot of our bed that was full of books. Big colorful books each with glossy covers and bright pictures. And somewhere in the chest, beneath all those fairy tales, was a book about, about baby Jesus. On the co cover was this yellow hayed manger. There was a star that glowed above the table, the stable, and, and Joseph and a donkey, equally wide-eyed, stood nearby, and Mary held a baby in her arms, and she looked down at him, and in the drawing, he looked up at her, and I remember looking at them both, wondering, what's the big deal? My dad had told us, though, the meaning of Christmas. He was a man of few words. You would have really liked my dad. He just didn't talk a whole lot. But in one of those bedtime book time moments, he said, boys, just remember, Christmas is about Christ. Well, I started asking those Christmas questions about Christ. And I guess you could say all of my life I've been asking those questions. He's my hero. He really is. He bought me. He saved me. He leads me. He fills me. And because of Bethlehem, I believe he knows what it's like to be a human. He knows what it's like to be you. Because of Bethlehem, he gets you. And because of Bethlehem, you have a Savior in heaven. You not only have a friend, you have a Savior because, well, Christmas begins what Easter celebrates, and that is the, the king on the cross who began as a baby in the manger, but he ended up as a king on the cross, vacating the tomb, ascending into heaven. Christmas celebrates His love for us, His grace. Not once does He say to you, clean up before you come in. He always offers, come on in, I'll clean you up. He, he begins this process of cleaning us up and preparing us for eternity. And it's really not your grip on Him that matters. What matters is His grip on you, and He never lets go. 
Christmas presents beneath the tree, that's nice. But the presence of Christ in our hearts, that's life-changing. Emmanuel. God is always near us, always for us, always in us. You'll forget Him, but God will never forget you. You are forever on His mind. You are forever in His plans. Emmanuel, He called Himself, God with us. I would have been happy with God made us, or God thinks of us, or God high above us. But God, He would not be satisfied with that. He is God with us right now, where we are in the midst of this challenging year. He is with us, and I think we need this message this year. Now more than ever, 2020 has been rough. We have been whipsawed by all the news. But can I encourage you, my friend, to take time Please, please, please receive the promise of the season. God always near us, always near you. By the way, I know you know this, but in case you don't, let me just say, Bethlehem was just the beginning. Jesus has promised a Bethlehem act too. Yet, no silent night this time, however. The skies will open, the trumpets will blast, and a new kingdom will begin. He will empty the tombs. He will melt the winter of death. He will press his thumb against the collective cheek of his children, and he will once and for all wipe away all tears, your tears, my tears, all tears. The manger invites, the manger even dares us to believe that the best is yet to be. And it could all begin today. Could you use some Christmas this Christmas, my friend? If so, let's invite God to make His presence, His power, and His promises undeniably evident to us this Christmas season. After all, because of Bethlehem, we not only have a Savior who came, we have a Savior who is coming. And He's coming soon. All the best to you, my friend.